and welcome to 24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports. Plenty of action coming your way with European football, champions in trouble in the NBA, and a look ahead to the final tournament of the year in the ATP. All that and much more coming up. Here we go. We begin with breaking news regarding the African Cup of Nations. We may have thought the drama surrounding it ended last week when the African Football Federation decided the tournament will proceed as normal. Apparently, the story is not over yet. Host Morocco officially rejected today hosting the tournament this coming January and instead asked for it to be postponed for one year until the beginning of 2016. This, of course, due to the spread of the Ebola virus. This decision puts the tournament, set to begin in just two months, in serious danger of being cancelled. The African Federation will convene for a special meeting later this week in Cairo. They will have to decide on their reaction to this latest development and whether the tournament will be cancelled or moved in a very short notice to another country. Now to the Bundesliga that just a few years ago was the most balanced of the big leagues in Europe, but now has turned into a one-team show no one can really stop Bayern Munich. It's quite safe to say the Bavarians will win the third successive title this season. Even with Arjen Robben on the bench, there was nothing really home team Eintracht Frankfurt could do against them, especially not when Thomas Müller is in this kind of shape. His own private show started just 20 minutes after the beginning of the game. Second half, more of the same. Müller is on target, Bayern is up 2-0, and maybe this is a secret. He's quick to thank Frank Ribéry, who set up the goal. He's, he has also kind words for his other teammates. What do they do in response? Set him another one. Muller is faster and stronger than the Frankfurt defenders. He keeps his balance and nails the hat trick. There was still time for another goal. This time Muller was just nearby, but it was Chardon Shakiri who scored. Bayern Munich easily winning 4-0. No problem for Pep and his guys. Premier League now, and when Chelsea visited Anfield for the last time, it was the match that cost Liverpool the championship. It didn't happen this time, simply because Liverpool is not even close to the top. Just like then, Chelsea won the game, despite an early lead by the mighty Reds. Gary Cahill and Diego Costa turned things around. It only got better for the Blues later on, as Manchester City lost two points. They were down twice against Queen's Park Rangers. Kun Aguero made sure they woke out at least with a point. They're now eight, eight points behind Chelsea. The biggest concern for Jose Mourinho's side is still Southampton, who won again, this time leaving Leicester behind 2-0, and manager Ronald Koeman is finally showing more faith in his team. We played only 11 games, but, but after the 11 games, the, the big teams, maybe they have more quality players than we have, but, but I don't see a lot of difference between uh, the big clubs and, and how they play. and, and, and with the program that they have. I think it, it can be, we can keep this surprise in, in the season. Now to Spain, where Barcelona got back to winning ways, but it was not easy at all. Following their two straight losses, the Blaugrana faced Almeria and they were down in the first half. That is before Luis Suarez came in. He set up both goals for the visitors, one for Neymar and one for Jordi Alba. It's business as usual for Real Madrid, who beat Rio Vallecano 5-1 at home. And there were no goals in the match between Celta Vigo and Granada. Crossing the border now to France, where Rennes beat Lorient 1-0 at home. The good season continues for Bordeaux, who won 2-1 in Lens. And just five days after firing coach Claude Makelele, Bastia finally found some glory as they beat Montpellier 2-0 at home. But all eyes in France are on tonight's Classique, which this time, apart from the usual prestige, is a direct clash at the top, and both managers, those of PSG and Marseille, are getting ready. Marcelo Bielsa is a coach who adapts often to his opponent's game. That's his choice. He obtains results with that, so one has to respect him. But he adapts his game to his opponents. I think it will be him who will adapt to our game. The problem is not tactical. The question is which group of players will take advantage of their opponents. The two teams understand that it is better for them to hold the ball than their adversaries to hold it. Following this weekend's action, the local leagues will take a week's break from it. for international qualifiers and friendly. Argentina will face Croatia and Portugal with an old, new name in the squad. 
Carlos Tevez will wear the Albi Celeste jersey once again. Manager Tata Martino called the Juventus striker to the squad. Former manager Alejandro Sabella left him out ahead of the World Cup, causing plenty of controversy. Now he's back and Martino thinks his performance in the Serie A speaks for itself. To me, most importantly, is that if he's not been the best, then at least playing as one of the top three best players in the Italian league for the past two seasons. He plays for Juventus, who repeated winning the league again. He is deserving of being selected. His individual performance alone has warranted him a spot on a squad too. He also performs very well. Tevez and Argentina are preparing for next year's Copa America. European teams are gearing, gearing up for the Euro qualifiers, but some other teams are not preparing for anything as they're not allowed to participate in international competitions, usually for political reasons, such as the case of Northern Cyprus. Chetankaya is the top football team in its league, with 14 championships under its belt. Sadly, this still makes the club small fry as they are part of the tiny football federation of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And they can take on other teams, as northern clubs don't have the right to participate in international competitions because of the political situation of the island, divided in two since 1974. I want to play with other teams, and I want to gain experience. And I want to gain more money from this, uh, but it's... It's not, um, it's not possible. Even the first division here is an amateur league with just 14 clubs and only each other to compete with. Players only earn a maximum of 500 euros a month, which means they all have a second job off the field. According to their coach, this sporting isolation is also affecting their performance. Our young people can't progress because the situation does not provide any openings for their future. We only play at an amateur level. Providing a breath of fresh air to the Federation, players still come from abroad with hopes for a chance to prove themselves in Cyprus. It's good for a beginning. You come, you make your debut two or three years, you make a good career and if you have a good manager, you can look elsewhere. Chetinkaya is playing Doan in a derby, a match between the two largest cities of the north, Nicosia and Carina. But these players want more, a chance to face the teams from the south who were part of the prestigious European Cup. Formal efforts to unify the two federations were launched last year, but there has been no progress so far. We did what we were asked. Now they need to respond. They must have pity for the young. Political issues are of interest only to politicians. We're just athletes. In a small sign of change, a Greek Cypriot player signed to a Northern Cyprus team for the first time in late September, a move that caused an uproar in the south. The player even received death threats. Now to tennis and the World Tour Finals will begin today in London. Roger Federer, who will face Milos Raonic in his first match later tonight, is here for the 13th time and even with a slim chance of still finishing the year in the number one spot. He's on the hunt for his seventh title in the event, but so far, he's just happy to be around. Uh, very excited to be back again. Um, been to the World Tour Finals so many times in so many years now. It's been my goal and my dream to be part of the Elite Eight at the end. And uh, one of the, the coolest events uh, that we have on the tour uh, is here at the O2 in London. And uh, uh, crowds are always there, and um, I'm happy to be, to be part of the show. The WTA season is over, no doubt as to who is the number one player here. Serena Williams once again finished the year at the top spot. Now she has some time off and she used it to unveil the Williams Arena in Washington, D.C. alongside Sister Venus. The complex includes six indoor courts and seven outdoors, including one clay. And the sisters who came from Compton and climbed to the top of the tennis world hope to see many talents being raised up in this new venue.
Serena and I are excited to, so many years later, see the, the center thriving and to see so many successes here. And if anyone has been here to see the programs that are run and the enthusiasm, the positivity, and uh, the discipline that are, that are instilled in the children here and the can-do attitude, it would be something you have to see and just to tell you about it is it wouldn't be powerful enough. So if you can come back other than today to, to witness that, you will be more than impressed. Now to the NBA and to champions, San Antonio, who are having a rather slow start to the new season. The Spurs hosted the New Orleans Pelicans and the camouflage jerseys they wore in honor of military appreciation night did not really scare the visitors who were in control throughout most of the match. The Spurs did come back. In final seconds, Danny Green nails all three free throws to put the Spurs up by one. Next possession, Anthony Davis drives to the hoop and the lead changes hands once again. The Spurs now have the final shot. Will they do it? The play sets up Kawhi Leonard for the open three, but he misses. He somehow gets hold of the rebound, but misses again. The Pelicans win 100 to 99. The Spurs fall to below 500. The famous Route to Rome sailing race began just a week ago, but there's already a lot of drama around. Lise Barnbaum and Michael Friedman recap the event so far, when there are still two weeks to go until the end in Guadeloupe. We are leading up to the Route de Rome, and the battle for first place will be a nail-biter. In the 10th edition, 91 competitors took to the sea to make the 6,560-kilometer link from San Malo to Guadeloupe. This challenging solo transatlantic race began under the gaze of thousands of spectators. It was a nice debut for the Mariners before the multiple damage that followed afterwards. The French have been affected the most this year. Thomas Coville, who was participating for the third time, had to leave the race early. After 10 hours, he collided with a freighter in Waisant. The skipper of Sodebo was unable to do anything about the dangers of the race. This is the moment when I struck it. I thought this is the worst time of my life. I feel when you're all alone in your boat at four knots to try to save your skin and save your boat. This year, there were a few special guests. The former pole vaulter and new skipper Jean Galfion did not hesitate to embark on the adventure. For the Olympic champion, he knows the challenge is great. I thought I may have claimed to believe at some point that it would be easier for me with my past, which is true in a sense. It has opened doors more easily. But then afterwards, it is not true. In whatever sport you have to convince your partners, the image is not enough at all, and then all the better in the end. Suddenly, I realized that I had to make my mark on the water. But the leader this year, Loïc Perun, the four-time world champion has nothing more to prove. Despite winning three English races and two Jacques Weber transatlantics, he has considered this new race a real challenge. Perun has agreed to replace Armel Lukic, who was the favorite of the competition. This would be a major challenge. I like that too. Obviously, I'm not here on vacation. And if I accepted a large and impressive mission, it's precisely because I like this type of challenge. Skipper just went a few miles ahead of Jan Gucard, his main competitor. On the side of his opponent, the enthusiasm is always appreciated. Now Guadeloupe, it is there. All right. I hope we will be able to reach Guadeloupe. We should reach it in two and a half days, three days. But the road to the room still remains a somewhat old-fashioned race with only four female participants, a situation that disappoints the sailor Florence Arthod, the only woman to have won the transatlantic. I think this is not a business for women. It is a rough world, which is hard, and above all, we are all the time in the seas, at least in my time. If women are not present, young people do not hesitate to embark on this challenge. Paul Hignard took off, and despite some difficult nights, he is still in the race. This is my first solo crossing, but after what I've been through, I know sailing solo brings both, and we do the route de room. With skippers from all sides this year, the route de room is an impressive and unexpected event, a race which turns our hearts to the rhythm of the waves and adventure. The New York Marathon, as well, we all remember, was run last week, but apparently it was not the only marathon held out last week. 
Another 42-kilometer race was held on Friday at the Nantes prison in France, where five inmates participated in the Freedom Within the Walls project. They ran in circles, 63 laps between the football field and the exercise yard, and despite the cramps, all five crossed the finish line. The winning time, by the way, was just under four hours. Not bad at all, even outside the walls. And we will recap our top story just before we go. Morocco announced it refuses to host the African Cup of Nations, which is set to begin in just two months. This is due to the Ebola virus in Africa and the fear the virus will spread through the country. Decision by the African Federation will be taken in a special convention this coming Tuesday in Cairo. And that's it for this edition. Thank you for joining us. Be with us tomorrow again for Talking Football. See you then. Bye-bye.